just offer my condolences to Shirley and to the entire family. Uh, when, when you've been married for 53 years, <laughs> it's always difficult to say goodbye and to let go. And no matter what the circumstances, it's never easy. And so we pray for you, for consolation for you. We're praying for him, for forgiveness for any of his sins, and that you go home today. That's why we're here today. We're here to pray for him so that the Lord would welcome him home. And we do so in the octave of Easter. What a beautiful time to celebrate a funeral, recognizing we see all the glory of the flowers, all the glory of light everywhere. It's the light that radiates from the risen body of Jesus. Because without his resurrection, we would all be in despair right now because we all know that we're going to die. One day it will come for us, hopefully not, not another 50 years from now. <laughs> right. But the fact of the matter is, is that, friends, this is the truth of all of us. No one has ever gotten out of dying. We will all have to die. But if we are united in Christ, this is not bad news. Because what awaits us on the other side is not the second death, not the pool of fire, but rather the new heaven and the new earth. Without Christ, we don't have that guarantee, but with him we do have that firm promise. Because no one else has ever risen from the dead, have they? Have you ever met one? No one else has ever risen from the dead, and no one else who has been raised from the dead is still alive today because they didn't have the life in themselves. There have been people who've been raised from the dead by a miracle throughout history, but they've died again. Lazarus died again. Other people who've been raised from the dead have died again. Christ, however, he dies no more because in him is life. And this life is the life of the human race for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's the good news of the gospel. It's why we proclaim it, that there is the necessity of every person to be baptized, to come into the family of God. And as we heard in the gospel, to receive the Eucharist, to eat the flesh of the Son of Man. And you say, that sounds horrifying, right? But we walk by faith, not by sight. He is the Lamb of God, is he not, who takes away the sins of the world. What did you have to do to the Lamb, the old Passover Lamb? You had to eat it. Otherwise, you were not saved from the angel of death in Egypt, yes? This is what we know by the Passover meal. This is the new Passover, and so we must eat him. But how can we do so unless it is a miracle of God? Yes, the same Jesus who raised, lep who, who healed lepers, who raised Lazarus, who gave sight to the blind, who did all these other things, and who himself raised from the dead, he can also speak to bread and wine and say, this is my body, this is my blood. Who are we to doubt him? If he can do all the other things, he can do this too. And in fact, if we ask the question, how is it that the cross can apply to me? We must unite ourselves to it in baptism and be fed by it in the Eucharist. And that's why he loved the Mass. That's why it was the greatest suffering these last two years that we couldn't be at Mass. They felt that very strongly, didn't we? Right? Just this idea that to be away from the Eucharist for any amount of time was the greatest agony because he knew what it was. He knew who it was. It was his life. It's the one that he's seeing right now and receiving as we hear his judgment from God. And so we pray, as we look at this image of divine mercy, we, we have many images of God. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about this as we have our monthly healing night. But this image of Jesus is a really beautiful image, isn't it? Because it's all dark, but he is the light who's stepping out into the darkness. He's not waiting to condemn us. He's waiting to save us. He's waiting for us as he steps out to us. He wants us to respond to him. And that's our response, the words underneath, Jesus, I trust in you. Because if we will simply trust in him, whoever believes in the Son of Man and unites himself to him and is obedient to him will have eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. What a great promise. What a beautiful life if we live it in Christ. And even if we suffer, even if we have great pain, trials, difficulty for many years, 50 years of pain for an eternity of bliss, pretty good trade. <laughs> But it wasn't all pain, was it? There was all, in fact, joy, even now, for those who live in Christ. We don't have to wait for heaven, because even in the midst of our suffering, even in the midst of his cross, he has joy with his Father. And so in the midst of your crosses, brothers and sisters, if you will unite yourself to Jesus, he will give you joy, even now, while you wait your turn to go home to him. So let's pray for Wes, let's pray for ourselves, that we would be faithful to him, that if we'd been far away, that we would repent and we would come back because the Lord Jesus, he wants us to be part of his family. He wants us to be one with him, but that requires our response. It requires we are willing to repent of our sins and come home to him. So let's make that commitment today. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. 
May Wes's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.